Okay, I have picked up a sequoia from strawberry from Bonnie's. I got it at my local Home Depot. It came with two little plants and it was very expensive. This thing was like three or four dollars. And um, this was given to me by a neighbor. I planted one in the shade. I'm gonna plant one where I want my peppers to grow this year. And I picked this up at Orchids. It's not as pretty of a plant as the one I got from Home Depot, but I think that I have so many more plants in here if I can get it to live. It, it's a flower garden in a quart size container, so I'm gonna give that a try. I also got these two peppers. So today I'm gonna be doing some container gardening because I'm gonna put one of these peppers into my pot with my uh, herbs. So I am digging out a hole in this whiskey barrel size pot <laughs> and digging out the weeds here. And when I and then I'm just dumping them into my sorghum garden because you know sorghum is a really nice plant to have. Throwing that soil there. It's still nice soil. And I'm trying not to disturb the roots of my time, which is just getting over the winter stress of being neglected by me. I'm gonna take this patio plus soil. This is this huge hole that I've dug. Let me see. Yeah. It's quite deep there, and that should be more than enough. I'll take a few more scoops out. That'll be more than enough for peppers. Uh, Peppers aren't huge feeders like tomatoes to me. Okay, so I have poured a half cubic foot of patio plus in there. That is really nice um, soil for a planter. I've never had soil this pretty. It looks like I made my own soil, but of course I buy it. Peel off this little shell. You can plant it in there if you live in an area with a lot of water, but in my area, you see there's stuff on there. I don't know anything about that. And then you see these two little plants here. I thought this was two, maybe it's just one. Nah, I think it's two. Okay, let's see. Cause usually, when they're this tiny they don't have two different stems coming up from the ground so i'm going to tease these apart good thing i got those apart the roots were so intertwined one of them would have died they got some kind of metal on their roots i don't know what that is can you see it it's weird can you see it there but um i'm only planting one in here and then I'm going to put one in the ground. So we'll just remove one. If I had planted those two plants together, I would have lost one. Oh, I see this one is connected to the bottom here. I am going to remove that because um, these things take way more water. I'm not that good of a waterer. And I'm going to put this right here in the center of the pot. Thyme is a very good companion plant. It's not a thug at all. And then we have some chamomile. Again, a very good companion plant. And um, I'm gonna pack this bad boy in there so it knows which way to grow. And then I'm gonna just shove this here little container around the soil immediately on it and give this some water. I'm gonna go plant the other one first in the ground. Did you see this? That's the hummingbird going at the sorghum and the rat tail radishes. I never would have thought that hummingbirds could find something in sorghum. I guess it has pollen in it. Shame, I'm gonna show know. you the rabbit damage I get. My, my neighbor has a pet rabbit, which should be a harmless plant, but to your vegetable seedlings, these guys are dangerous. It ate half of that corn leaf. All the corn that was over here 
and the squash plants you see it it trampled the brand new squash plant that came up there and um, I guess that wasn't good enough for it so now the I don't know if that squash plant is gonna make it it looks like it's not gonna make it but it ate that one there were other squash plants in here all gone ah <sighs> yum but um and this right here I'll show you this one this is my you can't even see it anymore this is my red clover plant it's a herb that I grow it's a woman's herb very good for your health and maybe that rabbit is a woman but she ate all of that I'll show you she also ate all of this right here so she took off like almost a half of my red clover over here I'll show you what red clover on the she didn't get to the other side before I discovered her this is what my red clover that didn't get eaten looks like so guys note to self always plant enough because even if you live in the city and you made preparation for the birds and the wild beast your neighbor may have a rabbit and to your fresh brand new baby vegetable and herb garden a rabbit is a terror i mean i didn't prepare for it i didn't realize that the rabbit was going to be let into my yard and i didn't catch him quick enough um i still do have some corn and my pumpkins were a little bit further away so thankfully i planted thickly I'll show you how I'm trying to block him out until the neighbor will patch up some bricks here. This is where the rabbit was getting into my yard from. You see this thin narrow? Well, at the bottom here, it gets very, very wide. And um, you can see, if you look, that's a fresh break. So they should still have that piece of wood, and they should be able to put it back. You see how that's really a fresh fresh break this is the red potato that I planted like um, maybe a week ago it was already it all those long things must have really been leaves because they shot out of the ground and they're actually taller than the ones that I grew that grew on their own from last year probably because these have a bigger potato base on them and um, so that just goes to show if you plant potatoes with nearly foot long um, runners on them, they'll still grow. Pretty ones here. I wonder if those are those Alaskan um, potatoes that I just got. So I think blue potatoes, I, they have some really pretty leaves on them in the shade. Well, looks like the rabbit didn't care for chicory or potatoes. Thank Wild California grass. Most people don't grow this. I have never watered this grass and it hasn't rained and I don't know how long I leave it here it goes to seed and it catches the runoff and that is all nothing over here has ever been watered you know this is kind of pretty whatever it is look it's got some little stuff on it so cute I like that I have no idea what it is but I like Today, it. I am going to make some fresh raspberry leaf tea. Some of the leaves are getting a little fatty like this and big. So, and you see they're shading out other leaves like that. So I just picked a few and we're gonna make some tea. This is my homegrown sweet basil. I would highly recommend that um, if you have a pot available, or live in a warm climate you should have this plant put it in your greenhouse in the winter time or um, in a warm place in the winter time but um, it it took at nighttime we got in maybe 40 degrees yeah it took down to 40 degrees and I think it could take down to even 30 because I lost my rosemary in the pot because the pot makes it a little bit cooler than it actually is in the winter time 
but the leaves of this plant, oh, they're so beautiful. And your food and teas and the plant itself just smells lovely. You have to listen to your bees. My thyme plant is in flower. And I don't know if you can see all the bees fluttering around the thyme plant. I just planted this pink flower because they say that bees like it. Well, they prefer thyme. So, the bees have spoken. They like the thyme. I think that's a honeybee. He's got no time for pinks. Maybe it's because these are um, from the store. They're like a shorter version. Maybe they don't have enough pollen. I don't know. If anybody knows, please, please leave a comment. The bees are ignoring the cosmos. There they are, lovely in the garden and being bee ignored. Uh, I guess the butterflies will pollinate them. I know the finches love their seed, so we'll see. But the bees are not a fan. I have my boiling water here, and I'm going to add my fresh rosemary. I'm sorry, these are raspberry leaves. This one's a little eaten by something, but that's not going to stop the flavor of the raspberry tea just a few fresh leaves. If these were dry, it would be probably equivalent to a um, tablespoon, I mean a teaspoon or a half teaspoon. And this is a little mature bay leaf. The fresh bay leaves actually can be eaten. I mean the, the new bay leaves can actually be eaten as a vegetable. You see how the water is affecting it? But it's a little woody. And I'm just going to boil that up. Now I'm adding the fresh bay leaf. I parboiled it a little bit. That's why it's got that color on it. And you see the tea is getting a nice fresh green color. Now I am going to put the lid on there. And slowly, slowly turn the fire down. A simmer and I'm gonna leave it like that for 10 20 minutes as long as you like it's no problem this is an herbalist tea so it's gonna be concentrated even with only a few leaves in it you see the color is already nice and pretty it's gonna be so refreshing you can eat you can drink this cold or hot or add it to other beverages a little bay and raspberry leaf tea. You can use dried leaves just as well. But that would be equivalent to a half teaspoon in this boiling technique. Or if you just want to steep it, you can just you can just steep um, a half teaspoon because these fresh leaves have a greenness to them, and so it's a little bit different flavor. And you have to have a lid on this so that the oils do not escape in the steam distillation. See the green brown color of the tea? Just a half teaspoon of raspberry leaves, but this is a slow boil simmer method. It's been boiling for 10 minutes. And um, the leaves, as you can see, still look fresh and crisp. I'm going to boil it until I get everything out of them. But you can drink the tea. And there's my final red brown raspberry bay leaf tea. Mm, so good. There's my infusion. 20 minutes and then I let it cool because it is a summer, a spring tonic. He's you know, let me know he'll fight. He won't fight. They're gentle little creatures, the alligator lizards. 